Hi, my name is Normandes from Algworks. I'm here in Hilton Hotel in San Francisco in Java 1 2016. And I'm here with Burst Sutter. Um, thank you so much to be here with us. And I will ask you to introduce yourself. Okay, well, my name is Burr. I know that's a very unusual name, but it is in fact my God-given name. <laughs> and um, I'm here at Java 1. I spoke this week on reactive microservices with Vertex. Vertex is a technology I'm particularly into right now. Uh, but I'm a Java person. I've been an Atlanta Java user group president for many, many years. I've been the, I've the founder of DevNexus, a very large developer conference out of Atlanta also. Been in the Java community for close to 20 years now or so. And um, kind of been doing this thing for a long time. I was also a C-sharp developer for a long period of time, but don't tell anyone else that. <laughs> okay, nice. So uh, talking about reactive. So why should we be interested in learning reactive system or reactive in programming? Yeah, so there is a difference between reactive programming and reactive systems. Uh, in the case of reactive programming, some people like to think that is a subset of functional programming, and you can do reactive programming on things like Arcs Java, as an example. Um, and also, there's reactive reactive streams in like Java 8, and so people are looking at it from a streaming standpoint. But in general, what we're seeing when it comes to reactive and this interest in it, and this event-driven space, asynchronous space, also is that the volume of data we're now seeing is incredibly high. And it has nothing to do with like, you know, just web browser and transactions, you know, people hitting a website and things like that. Now we're talking mobile devices, billions of mobile devices producing transactions that feed into systems. And even further than that, IoT, the Internet of Things, producing potentially trillions of transactions that enter into our systems. So when you start dealing with that real-time stream of data coming in from all these different sensors, devices, mobile devices, web browsers, end users, human end users, you got to start thinking differently about how you scale that problem. And so reactive programming, of course, is one way to write the code in a nice, succinct way that's kind of stream-oriented, if you will. You have the concept of observables and futures, and depending on how you look at that programming model. But reactive systems is really uh, from like the reactive manifesto. So reactivemanifesto.org, you would see things like, um, so that's where you have your resiliency, your elasticity, being messaging driven it was the key principles there uh, reliability uh, that's all part of you know guaranteeing your response time ensuring your uptime ensuring your scale out scale out scale back and being everything being having everything being message driven and asynchronous so it's just a kind of a different way to build systems if you will uh, but it does mean you can build some really interesting systems with that technique and technology yeah I got you I got you and you said uh, about vertex so can you talk about Nerd Vertex yeah. Mitchell. Yeah, so Vertex, uh, it's, uh, the website's vertex.io, and it's a super cool uh, programming toolkit. So they actually refer to themselves as a toolkit because it's nothing more than a single jar file you can download and include in your project. You just add it to your class path and start using the API. You can just put it in your POM XML if you use Maven and do your build. And then you just start leveraging, you know, you start subclassing abstract vertical. Um, you know, you start putting the API into your code and start leveraging it that way. It's super simple in Vertex to just open up a socket listener for any kind of communication protocol. It might be a web socket to the browser, or it might just be HTTP to the browser. It could be UDP, TCP, any kind of listener that you want. And then you write your code in an asynchronous way, right? So literally you're just listening for certain events coming over that channel, and then you have your, your, your handler that basically reacts to that event. So it's all based on an event loop, kind of like Node.js is. So if you're familiar with Node.js and the programming model there, it's similar to that world, right? And, but it's all done in Java, but it's still polyglot. Uh, you can actually run JavaScript note Vertex applications. You can run Ruby Vertex mm -hmm. applications. You can run uh, Groovy or Java. And I prefer to use Java, obviously. But mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a really fun programming environment, incredibly lightweight, small little jar footprint to add to your application. Then you can easily build whole web applications right out of it or any kind of any kind of reactive style application. Okay, so talking about application, what kind of applications can we create using Vertex, reactive, application model like that well the one thing like we showed in our demonstrations earlier uh, this year as well as the demonstrations I showed here at Java one is uh, one is like a simple game and so it's like a real-time game specifically going out to the browser in the phone and when I say real-time I mean it's incredibly user interactive every touch on the phone was a transaction back through the network back through that person's 3g 4g connection LT connection back into the cloud 
back through Vertex, which actually hit multiple services and responded back to the user in many cases. So basically, as they popped balloons on their phone, they're animating across their phone, we saw a real-time dashboard animating showing their results. So that concept of real hardcore interactivity is a great example of where Vertex really, really shines because it makes that programming model so easy that it's really, um, real neat to actually build apps that way. And actually, in my other demo I showed is you actually have multiple JVMs all talking to each other through what's called the Vertex event bus, and they're doing real-time messaging back into the browser. So the browser is also a first-class citizen. You see messages being produced across the JVM cluster, and then you see the data showing right up in the browser. Mm -hmm. So um, one great example is like Google Docs. Have you seen Google Docs, right, where two or three people can edit a slide or a spreadsheet or document simultaneously, and you see all their changes? That, that kind of user interactivity, uh, I'm not saying Google Docs is built with Vertex, mm -hmm. but that's a style of application you could create with Vertex. Okay, so talking about applications, do you think that it's suitable to use Vertex, to use reactive applications uh, model in the uh, enterprise world? Do you think we can use it? So in a traditional enterprise, it actually make, it's still based on the JVM, which of course is you know the, the thing that we all know and love and people have used extensively throughout the enterprise. So the good news is you just pack that jar file in your application and you have it kind of thing. Um, but one specific use case that really kind of jumps out to me is the same use case that people like in a Node.js land, and that is the ability to resurface existing systems with a new API. Very, yeah, that's a very good use case for that because building a RESTful API or a WebSocket API or any kind of listening TCP IP type to API would be super easy to do in Vertex. And then you can make the invocations to the backend system. And the nice thing is it's all done asynchronously. And so if you're trying to be responsive to your users, right, we're being responsive is one of the key aspects of reactive systems, the reactive manifesto, then you can basically respond back to your users based on the request that can be fulfilled at that moment. So here's a great example, if you, and this is true of a, a few retail customers that I've been speaking to. If you think of the mobile application and what that, what that looks like, you see like the, the price of the item, the picture of the item, you know, if you're shopping online in e-commerce kind of way, you see the, the star rating is at four stars or five stars. You might see the description. You might see recommend, recommended offerings, right? And if you've done any kind of shopping, you see that kind of shopping cart, you know, user description or item description. Yeah. So all those are actually can be individual calls to the backend systems. Mm -hmm. And in the case of like Vertex, it could actually respond to all those individually, asynchronously, populating that page based on when its response is available. Like in the case of an inventory quantity field, like, you know, we have 25 items in inventory, that might have to go all the way back to someone's mainframe to get that data, especially in a large retail company, as mm -hmm. an example. And you could do that. You could have the API surfaced. Uh, through Vertex, then make that, that reach kind of back into the mainframe, grab the data, but didn't block any threads, didn't make anybody wait, and certainly didn't wait for the page to paint, if you will. It actually would respond when it had that data available. So you can do some really interesting use cases with it and still make it very enterprise applicable. And if you want to do just plain old everyday, you know, uh, web apps with it, you could. You know, you don't have to be all fancy async real time. You know, you could, you could make the user wait also. If you wanted to okay oh very nice so you just saw that it's uh, amazing right you can create a lot of great applications so can you talk for our audience where they can search more information or they can study more about vertex or about the reactive system reactive applications yeah, you can start with uh, Vertex.io, the website specifically, or, you know, Google for Vertex. There's actually two Vertexes in the world, I've noticed. There's ours, which is the technology, the Java technology. And then there's something to do with, like, uh, bags and stuff you wear. So it's not, nothing to do with clothing or garments or bags. It has to do with Java. <laughs> <laughs> That's first thing. Um, and then uh, you, you, so you go to the website, and also the presentation I just delivered this week is under bit.ly, uh, B-I-T dot L-Y slash reactive MSA. So for microservices architecture, so Reactive MSA will take you to the slide deck, which also has links to numerous examples and demos, yeah. uh, and also can walk you through microservices, Reactive, and Vertex, just briefly, and then you can deep dive from there. Oh, pretty nice. So thank you very much for your thank time you. here. Thank you. And for you that are watching, watching this video, please thumbs up, comment if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Share with your friends. Bye-bye.